What is going on, New York Jet fans? This sport of football is over 100 years old in the NFL, and it is still one primarily in the trenches, and I think that is where the Jets do have an advantage in the AFC East. I understand we feel the need to give 27 caveats about health and all that, but I'm just going to tell you right now, I am picking this team April 8th, 2024. I am picking this team to win the division. It's the first time I, I felt that way heading into a season since at least 2015. Did not feel that way last year. But uh, let's talk about it. offensive line. This is from Open Source Football. They pieced, you've probably seen these charts floating around on Twitter. And you probably saw them last year while the, where the Jets were all the way down in the doldrums. So at the beginning of last season with their projected starters, the Jets were at 19. And then they ended the season when they clipped up the actual results. They were 30th with only the New York Giants and the Washington Commanders being worse rated offensive line per this ranking um, for the Jets. So this is only pass protection here. So if you look right now, the Jets have a cumulative ranking that puts them as the 10th overall offensive line in the NFL in terms of pass protection. And it goes position by position. So let's take a look from left to right. The left tackle score is at a 97, which is the third highest. So they have Tyron Smith, uh, or I'm sorry, the fourth highest. They have Tyron Smith behind only Trent Williams, Tristan Wirfs, and Laramie Tunsil. Now, this is the starters. So let's be honest, like off rip right there. You, higher percent chance that those other three guys play the full season than Terrence Smith. So even if you bake in, I don't know, four or five games of backup play and you knock that to what the average is still in the eighties, low eighties, maybe still pretty good, still well above league average um, left tackle play. Who's that for Denver? Is that Garrett Bowles holding down a 96? All right. Um, <laughs> now left guard. This is John Simpson, 59. I think that probably checks out about a 60. You know, he seems okay to me. I do with Simpson. I do have, you try not to hold past players against new players, but I do have a little bit of the Lakin heebie-jeebies in terms of, I like Simpson's 2023 film. I haven't watched anything be before that. And okay, he was on the Detroit Lions, was not very good, goes to a really good team with really good other offensive line pieces around him and kind of has a breakout and then gets paid by the Jets. But at the same time, he gets paid two years, uh, 12 million. So if he's not that good, it's not going to be nearly as big of a deal as, as Lakin. And furthermore, Lakin was signed to be one of our cornerstone blue chip pieces to the offensive line. Right now, Simpson is the worst starter. He was the worst starter on Baltimore's offensive line. They went to a conference championship. If he's our weakest link, I think we could live with that. And he's making very reasonable money. Next center, uh, Joe Tipman, 28 in pass blocking. I mean, Joe Tipman is not a bottom five, bottom six pass protecting center in the NFL. Now, there were some awareness lapses, picking up stunts and stuff. Um, but, dude, Joe Tipman is solid. I like his – I think he is the one player we talk about moving likely from a – primarily going from 2021 to 2022 to 2023 and beyond. It was outside zone, LaFleur, a mixed bag in 2023 with Hackett, some split zone. And it looks like more of a power gap scheme. That's where my J.C. Latham love is coming from. Guys, if we're, if we're running outside zone, don't draft J.C. Latham. Okay, I'm telling you, he's not going to get to his spot on time. But if you're trying to punch people in the throat, that's a different story. So... I don't get that of Joe Tittman. He's got to at least be average um, heading into year two. So the 97 is probably a little bit high given Tyron Smith's health, lack thereof recently, recent years. And then Joe Tittman, that's just objectively has to be higher. Simpson around a 60. Okay, we'll live with that. Right guard, AVT, 51. Come on, What? Okay, coming off of an Achilles, I understand that, but other the guy, other guys on these lists are probably coming off of injuries. He's got to be at least as high as Simpson. <laughs> at least give him a 60. 
coming off an ACL. Morgan Moses, 78. That feels about perfect. I'm almost I'm almost thinking like this is like video games rankings, right? Tyron Smith, 97. Morgan Moses, 78. Simpson and AVT should at least be in the 60s. AVT should be really in the 80s, but if you want to say coming off of an Achilles, that's fine. And Joe Tittman objectively has to be higher. So maybe some fans of other teams would say, who's the center for the Chargers? Gee, I, I don't know about this. I don't know about Look at the Lions, though. If you look at the teams that at the top, it does check out. Look how far the Lions have dragged. They went to an, a title, title, uh, NFC title game just on their offensive line. Yes, they have Amon Ross St. Brown. Jared Goff is solid. They got some nice pieces, Aiden Hutchinson. But they really just said, hey, great offensive line, weak conference, go. All right. So let's say some of the other ones are too high, whatever. Whatever the case may be, we would all sign for the Jets having the 10th best offensive line in the NFL. I mean, when's the last time we had a top 10 offensive line? Probably 2011. When's the last time we even had an average offensive line? We definitely haven't had an average offensive line in front of Sam Darnold or Zach Wilson ever. So at least six years. At least six years. Now, you couple that with, okay, where are the Bills on here? And the, uh, so the Bills are, they're not even in the top 16. So if you look at the, the other teams in our division, Buffalo, 22. Uh, Miami, 24. New England, 27. That 29 on their left-hand side is Connor McDermott holding down the blind side for whatever poor quarterback they run out there. Oof, obviously this is pre-draft. But furthermore, I think the Jets are, of the four teams in the division, I think the Jets are the most likely team to get the highest increase to this number post-draft because I think they're more likely to take an offensive lineman than the Patriots or the Bills. I think the Miami Dolphins, there's a really good chance they take an offensive lineman, but they're picking past 20. So you hope the number 10 overall pick offensive lineman would be better than the number 21st pick offensive lineman if they both go offensive line. So I think when this shakes out after draft, if they redid this, it Jets would be even better shape. Uh, now, I did an AFC roster rankings, and I gave the Jets the second best offensive line in the AFC, AFC East. I gave the Bills the top nod just because of continuity. Um, but obviously the, the starting lineup, the Jets are the best on paper. You just have some questions there that we've, we've beaten to death. We know what the questions are. And now you pair this with the defensive line where there's no debate. There's no debate to be had that the Jets have the best defensive line in the AFC East. Um, the Patriots, yeah, they got Judon, who's elite, but then that's really it. Uche, nice role player. Uh, Barrymore, nice role player. Wise, nice role player. They're solid. Okay, but they don't have the star power the Jets have. The Dolphins last year, you could have made an argument because Christian Wilkins, Jalen Phillips, Bradley Chubb, Van Winkle, they got that other dude who reminds me of like, who's that white dude they have as like a defensive tackle? He's pretty good too. But they lose Christian Wilkins, their best defensive lineman, to free agency. Um, Bradley Chubb, sur uh, surgery, 12-month recovery time, injured in December. Bradley Chubb, we won't see until 2025. Jalen Phillips, Achilles pop, post bye week. We may not be seeing him until Thanksgiving. You know, they signed, they signed Shaq Barrett, you know, but they really took it in the teeth on both sides, uh, in the trenches on both sides. And the Bills... They have a good defensive line. Ed Oliver was an absolute beast last year. Greg Rousseau, I like a lot. He's still like 22 years old. He definitely has a double-digit sack ceiling. You no know, Epinesa, decent role player. Daquan Jones, solid, solid. No slouches, but losing Leonard Floyd and the Jets adding Hassan Reddick definitely pushes that towards the, um, the New York Jets. Because if you want to call Quinnen with J.J. a wash with – Ed Oliver and Greg Rousseau. That's fine. But now you're comparing like AJ Epinesa to Hassan Reddick. <laughs> and, uh, you know, whatever the third stringer they have to Will McDonald, who's a first round pick from a year ago. And on and on and on. 
So the com- the composite ranking of the Jets offensive and defensive line, in my opinion, would put them number one in the division. And I think that would be primarily the reason why I'm picking them to win the damn thing. Oh, we have to prove it. Yeah, okay. It's a year-to-year league, man. I'm just telling you my two cents, my opinion. Let us prove it on the field. Well, we're not playing for five more months, so what are we going to talk about for five more months, man? <laughs> uh, I think this this bodes really well for the Jets. I would really, it would really make me feel better if we could add some sort of veteran tackle insurance. Because if we don't go tackle in the draft, then I do. We definitely need depth. We need depth on the interior too, because right now our only backups are uh, Wes Schweitzer, who's fine. He, I like Wes Schweitzer as an interior backup lineman. I bring back McGovern. You know, uh, they're, they're McGovern and if McGovern and Schweitzer are your backup interior, that's a fine backup interior. But we only roster Schweitzer, Max Mitchell, and Carter Warren. Honestly, Max Mitchell, based on this film last year, he needs to be battling for a roster spot. <clears throat> and Carter Warren, you know, maybe he could be a swing tackle, but I, I would at least like to bring somebody into where, okay, Carter Warren has to beat out Donovan Smith, who we know isn't good to be swing tackle. It's like, all right, at least you earned it, right? I think that's more than fair. More than fair. But yeah, uh, the starters in the offensive line, the starting unit in terms of talent, in my opinion, is easily the best in the the conference, or I'm sorry, in the division. Um, but we have concerns with depth and continuity, so that's fine if you want to rank the Bills a little bit ahead. The defensive line, we're clearly number one. We've proven it first in sack rate last year, and all we did was swap out, you know, Huff or Reddick and Quentin Jefferson for Kinlaw. And that will McDonald in his second year, Jermaine Johnson in his third year. Yeah, the defensive line is as good, at least 95% as good. Could be better depending on how things go. Yeah, man. Love that. Love winning in the trenches. Love that you guys are hanging out with me on a Monday. Appreciate it. If you're coming in after the fact or already hanging out, if you want to smash the thumbs up button, the YouTube gods place a premium on that. Get into your comments here. See what we think of Dakota's hanging out. Oh, man. Dakota, it started off already. I just record right before this, I recorded a video on Brock Bowers. I got had the, the eclipse day where my, my day, day job was off. So I watched a lot of film today. And I got to say, you know, I released a top 12 draft preferences this morning, but some guys, some guys have risen and fallen risers, Troy Fatanu and Brock Bowers fallers, JC Latham, my crush. I still like JC. I still like JC. I think I might like Fatanu even more. JC's get off. Oh, he's a little slow. Fatanu glides, man. Fatanu is nice. I don't know if I watched a lot of him today, man. And I don't know if he's not my tackle too, at least for the Jets. But let's see, Dakota, what are you saying, man? Take out Conklin for Bowers. We need more O-line depth. We still need running back two behind Brees Hall. Izzy won't cut it in the long run as running back two. Also, S. Gibson as a slot receiver heading into week one. No bueno. Um, I don't know if Izzy wouldn't cut it as a running back too. I don't really have a hot take on Izzy one way or the other. You know, I think he was a fifth round running back who got taken in the fifth round. Cool. Now he was like 20 on draft night. So that kind of explains maybe why he didn't get a huge role his rookie year. But running back two is not like wide receiver two, right? Running back two is like a dime a dozen dude. You pay two, like 2 million bucks. You know, think about the really good teams in the NFL. Who's their running back to? I don't even know. Who's the Chiefs running back to? Didn't they bring back Clyde Edwards Alaire? He sucks. Uh, who's the Ravens running back to? Gus Edwards, who just scores like 27 touchdowns because he gets one yard gains all day long. I, I don't know, man. Who's the Bills running back to? Ty Johnson? Uh, running back to is not a big deal. You need it now. The depth chart is bare, so you need to add another running back. And I would prefer. Uh, I think they're going to wait till after the draft. I would prefer a veteran because I wouldn't necessarily want, you know, behind Brees Hall is just sixth round rookie and 
fifth round second year player who hardly played you know what's the harm of that but the running the veteran running back market is picked over man picked over Tyler Boyd for wide receiver three says Dakota. Um, if the draft comes and goes, which I think I think pretty much you're gonna see a just crickets in free agency around the league until after the draft. It makes sense for the free agents and for the teams to just see what's up after the draft. But if the draft comes and goes, and for whatever for whatever reason the Jets don't come away with a wide receiver either at pick 10 or pick 72, I would call up Tyler Boyd. I got a problem with that. He's better than Lazard. I would take him over Gibson or Brownlee. So he would be wide receiver three. But I would wait because let's say you sign Tyler Boyd now. Then Romo Dunze falls to you. You take him because you're not dumb. Well, then now you're paying Tyler Boyd, what, eight to 10 million? And you're paying Lazard 10 million. So now you're paying wide receiver four and five, 10 million a piece. That's just not good resource allocation. So I'm good on waiting for Boyd, but I'll spin the block. After the draft, no problem if uh, things get funky. We we should take a wide receiver for one of those first two picks, though. I'd be kind of bummed if we didn't. Love Dakota, Dakota always puts in there the number one defense, hopefully top 10 to 12 offense incoming. Those are both realistic. The Jets were a number, the Jets were a top five defense for two straight years. So number one is not crazy. And a top 10 to 12 offense. Yeah, we would all sign for that. You don't, you don't miss the playoffs with a number one defense and a top 12 offense, right? That would be an NFL record, I imagine. <laughs> You're a Jets super fan. What's up, man? Justin Jets coming in with the hot takes. Mark my words, Marvin Harrison Jr. will be a career number two receiver. I think he'll be a taller Roddy White. Well, Roddy White was pretty tall. Roddy White was kind of nice, though. <laughs> Neighbors, Thomas Jr., Odunze will all end up having better careers. Um, What's the weakness in Marvin Harrison Jr.'s game? I really can't even think of one. Every other prospect I can think of a weakness. I can't think of Marvin Harrison Jr.'s weakness. He doesn't, I guess he doesn't have like Jamar Chase, <clears throat> Malik Neighbors, Jalen Waddle, like Devontae Smith level play speed. That's maybe it. But I think Marvin Harrison Jr. is as close to bust proof as any player in the class, man. He just makes it look easy. Yeah, is there anything elite? His release is elite. His release is elite, and I would I would consider his hands pretty close to elite. His route running is, I mean, he does a lot of things really well. Steve says Worf was a right tackle to left tackle, so don't count out Fuaga. Yeah, Fuaga, I'm probably lower on than. Then most, not crazy. I think he was number 10 in my round one preferences for the Jets, so nothing nothing crazy. But I, I see a lot of all or nothing in Fuaga's film. Like sometimes he'll just blast a dude like three yards in the air. Like he has the he has probably the best pancake. If you if you reel together all his pancakes, highlight reel of any offensive lineman, but sometimes he just completely whiffs. I like Fuaga, though. This is a really good offensive line class, man. I'm telling you, Fatanu. I don't know what, like, what am I missing on Fatanu this whole time? Because I peeled back and I, 
I watched a good sample of these guys and then <clears throat> I just hadn't had the time to go back and watch film. But today I watched a lot of Fatanu, a lot of Latham, a lot of Bowers up on Fatanu and, and Bowers down a bit on Latham. Still probably higher than most. Still think he's really solid, firmly in that tier two of tackles. But I do think the get off and the athleticism scare me a little bit, especially when I watch because when I watch them back and forth, like how just Fatanu glides, man. It's easy movement. Not not elite play strength. Not not no nobody has the anchor of Latham, so it's not even a fair comparison. <clears throat> I know he was a five year starter. Is Fatanu older? Is that part of why people care? How old is he? All right, he'll be 24 in October, so older than average, but nothing crazy, nothing egregious. Not like Hendon Hooker where he was 26 as a rookie or something like that. Max has a really like Brock Bowers, but I like two or three of these tackles more. I think that's a perfectly reasonable place to be at. I think we move Je Jeff Life as I think we move down and take offensive line. Then why does he run round two? That, that would probably be my ideal scenario. If you ask me right now, my ideal scenario would be if you could somehow move down you know, in between 11 and 20, get a second round pick, take Troy Fatanu, offensive lineman, and then take a second round receiver. I don't know, Troy Franklin. And then the rest of the draft, it's, it's gravy after that. That would be the, that would be the best resource allocation in my opinion. But there's a lot of variables that go into that. It's easy to make mock drafts when you can force the board to fall <laughs> however you want. It's harder to do real drafts. What are Kurt says, what are we looking to get if we trade it back with the Raiders? So I'll tell you what, man. More than that dumb chart says, because you know if the Raiders are coming up, they're coming up for their quarterback. And if you want your quarterback from a an in-conference team, you got to pay a tax, man. Uh, draft trade value chart. It's not much. Because e because even from to go from up to six from 10 is like 300 points. So doo -doo -doo. 150 points is the difference between 10 and 13. 150 points is equivalent to the 88th overall pick in the draft. So a mid to late third round pick. So where does does Vegas have a pick here? So their pick 77, depending on who's on the board, if if Joe Alt falls, which I don't think is crazy because I think there could only be one tackle taken in the top nine. If if LA goes wide receiver, if LA goes wide receiver, it sets up for maybe only one tackle in the top nine. And maybe somebody likes fashion new better than alt. Unlikely that, you know, unlikely that he, he's the first tackle there, but it's possible. So then if alt is there, I'm not trading back. I'm taking all. If Odunze is there, I'm not trading back. I'm taking Odunze. But other than that, I'm open for business. I'll trade back. I'll trade back and risk losing out on Latham, risk losing out on Fashionu, risk losing out on Bowers. I, I'll trade back and I'll deal with it because to me, the drop off between Fashionu and Latham is not that big a deal. To me, the drop off between, oh, Bowers is gone. Okay, I'll take Brian Thomas Jr. Oh, Brian Thomas Jr. is gone. Okay, I'll take Bowers. I, it's not that big of a deal to me. The third round pick is more is a bigger difference than that. If Alter Odunze are there, I'm not getting cute. Furthermore, when you when you couple that with the fact that right now, Denver's at 12. So if the Raiders jump you and come to 10, they're taking a quarterback. So that's already one player where you, that you do that you weren't going to take. So now you're really jumping back effectively two spots. Now Denver, that De De Bo Nix to Denver is like the most consensus pick besides Caleb Williams to the Bears. 
So it could be two quarterback picks there. So I think Minnesota's coming up. So really, it could be one player. It could be one player picked in between those spots. And I would mo- I would be willing to move back and take pick 77 it's for just one non-quarterback to come off the board. No doubt about it. Now, maybe you can get creative. Maybe you could tell Vegas, hey, we'll give you 10 and 72 for 13 and 44. Then you have a first round pick at 13, a second round pick, and um, a four, and a fourth round pick. So that's the way you get a second. I don't think going from 10 to 13 gets you a second straight up unless they're desperate. <clears throat> Justin Jess says, I wouldn't take Bowers in the first round. He has never proven he can separate. I mean, that's fine if you don't want Bowers in the first round, but the reason being he can't separate, I would I would disagree with that. Dude, you, you, stick him out there, you stick him out there as a big slot, and you can run two-way goes on linebackers or safeties. If you want to if you want to play nickel, then he then we're running the ball. You can dictate personnel. Max likes Fashionu. You think he's OT1? That's not crazy. Uh, I mean, he, he and Alt were like 1A and 1B for the longest time. I, I just think Fashionu's run block, he needs a lot of work. And if teams see, think that they can square that away and fix that, his pass protect, protection ceiling is elite. It's elite. So if a team thinks they can get his run blocking to average, yeah, he's worthy of a top 10 pick. Adam says, why would anyone replace Conklin with an unproven Bowers? More than 50% of Bowers' receptions were behind the line of scrimmage. Checkdowns. You wouldn't replace Conklin with Bowers. You would play them together like the Bills did with Dawson Knox and Dalton Kincaid. I imagine. And if you're not going to do that, then don't take them. If you're not going to do that, then don't take them. That that's how I would envision Brock Bowers being used. He and Tyler Conklin be on the field a ton. Neighbors could possibly be better than Harrison. I like how you spelled it like next door neighbors. The neighbors think I'm selling. Nope. All right. Uh, yeah, neighbors. Neighbors could be wide receiver one. I don't think it's a hot take. Daniel says, how do you factor in Tyron Smith's injury with your analysis? I think you pencil him in to miss four to six games. And you kind of have to understand that when you're grading the grading the Jets left tackle play, you have to take the average of Tyron Smith and Carter Warren, who's the primary backup tackle on the roster right now. But Max says Fatano gets tricked easily. I don't think so. I think he's putting those hands everywhere and keeping guys off balance. Predictable? I think he has a very varied punch package. And he's old. Well, he is an older prospect. Fifth-year player. So that that should factor in. I like Fatano, man. Yeah, I watched a lot of him today. Because for a while, people said he was going to be a guard. So I kind of wrote him off. And I just was kind of, I was putting him down there and just somewhere, just sticking him up a certain place, you know, trade back. But the thing about Fatano is he he accomplishes two really important things for this team. Uh, if he hits, right? Obviously. 
Number one, he's the only offensive line prospect that can do both of these things. One, provide depth at four spots because he could play left tackle, right tackle, or guard at least as a backup as a rookie. So the the whole immediate impact thing, dude. If you're if you're backing up four spots, you're playing, right? So he'll play a minimum eight games as a rookie. Then also could be a future like long term left tackle answer. None of the other players offer both of those things. Olu could be a future left tackle answer. Alt can be a future. Well, Alt is better than than Fano, so I won't even I won't even go there. But with the rest of them, Fashionu can be a a long term left tackle solution. He could probably play right tackle in a pinch if you needed to him as a rookie. So maybe as a rookie, he's your swing tackle, and then he's your left tackle of the future. But he can't play guard, so his playing time is limited year one. Um. Fuanga probably couldn't play left tackle. Latham mm, maybe could play guard. Maybe he could play left tackle. Um yeah, I think that I think that he's the only guy that you're confident gives you both of those things. Watch any Fashana tape? Yeah, plenty. He's good, man. He fits pass rushers like a glove and mirrors unbelievably. Anchor, below average. Run blocking, you know, probably worse, probably the worst run blocking film of any of the tackles I've watched. Now, I haven't gotten into like Guyton and guys and like uh, the dude from Arizona. I haven't gotten down there. So maybe there's a steal somewhere that I'm missing, but of the like consensus top six, I think his run blocking is the worst. But his pass protection is probably the second best to alt. You right up there with alt, honestly. So Joshua's pumped up for the season. Take pick 77 says Charles and move up to the second round. That would, but that would, I mean, that might cost you both. That would cost you a lot. So we'll pick 72. You mean? So pick 72 is 230 points. Let's say you want to get to like, I don't know, pick 50 mid second round. That's 400 points. So you need 170 more points. So that would be, you would have to give pick 72 and both of our fourth rounders, at least by the point chart, to move up to the second round. I wouldn't do that. I don't like the idea of moving up to get a second rounder. If you're going to move up, go move up and get neighbors. If you want a second rounder, move back. I don't like the idea of trading from up from the third to the second. The value just isn't there for me. Once you're out of the top you know, 40, 45 players. I want more dart throws. If you're coming up for like neighbors, then you go, go get the blue chipper. But once you're out of that top 45 players, I think it's more of a, a volume game with draft picks. Yeah, so Amarius Mims and Brock Bowers have their pro days on Wednesday. That, those are two really interesting ones to watch for the Jets. Cooper DeGene had one today. Don't care. Love the great. I'm sure, he's a great player. Do not take a corner at 10, I swear. <laughs> Please. Joe Douglas.
They will pick who they pick. Just win, baby, says Todd. Well, Todd, how am I supposed to have how am I supposed to have streams about that? <laughs> but you're correct. They're gonna do what they're gonna do. They don't care. They don't care what we think. Super chat from my D. It says, thanks, brother. Says it's BPA for me all day. As long as the Jets are aggressive, I'm good. JD has to finish his offseason and seal the deal. Yeah. BPA, man. There's examples every draft year of, you know, if you go a certain position, like the 2022 draft, a lot of people just wanted offensive linemen. Um, now, to be fair, I don't know if anybody knew that those top couple guys were going to suck that bad. Jeez. I know Evan Neal has sucked. I didn't really like Evan Neal. I did like Iki Aquanu, and I think he has sucked too. But um, yeah, we came away with Sauce and and, and Garrett. And Sauce wasn't a the we didn't think Sauce was the position of biggest need at the time. We just signed DJ Reed. We all liked Bryce Hall, right? But go get a dude, man. Go get a dude who can play. Please on offense. <laughs> Only qualifier. <laughs> Is this legitimate? No. You know, people tag you in like a report and then it's like, it's completely made up. I just thought something uh, not cool. Don't do that. Thank you, Mike. Yeah, man. BPA. I agree. Frank says, can we afford Bakhtiari? I imagine it would be a pretty cheap incentive-based deal, but actually right now we can't. We can't afford anyone. We have to restructure somebody because we pretty much have no cap space. So we'd have to call up JFM and, and redo his contract, and we can have $8 million to go right away. So yeah, we could sign him no problem if we want. Charles says, rather have Brian Thomas Jr. than Bowers. Uh, I disagree, but not by a crazy amount. I think Bowers. So I did a, my video this morning. I recorded that like a couple days ago with my top 12 preferences. I think I probably, after today's film binging, would go in a little bit of a different direction. So guys who I would move up. I think I would have Brock Bowers as the fifth, my fifth preference. One Marvin Harrison, two neighbors, three alt, four Odunze. No, five Fatanu, six Bowers, seven Latham, eight Fashionu, nine Brian Thomas Jr., ten Fuaga, eleven and Mary's Mims. That's where I'm at. So I have Brian Thomas Jr. at nine. My ninth on my on my board, right? Can I say that? That's kind of cringe. I don't have a board, but you know what I'm saying. <laughs> on my uh, preference list, so not too far apart there, man. But Amarius Mims, he's a wild card. Amarius Mims is a wild card. His pro day is about to be bonkers. Super chat from Adam. What's up, man? Appreciate that. If you want to attach um a message to it, I don't know if you meant, you meant to. I'll try to dig it out here in the comments. Let me see here. Mm. I'm just seeing your two bucks, man. I'm not sure. If you want to add something else in the comments, I'll pull it up and we can talk about it. Oh, is this what you meant to say? Uh, Adam says the post that said Bowers has not proven he can separate is 100% right. Michael Nania says the same thing. Okay, well, 
that's the beautiful thing about the draft is you and me, Adam, we could be end up being more correct than Daniel Jeremiah and Ozzie Newsom, right? <laughs> you could go a lot of ways. So I generally around draft season keep an open mind. Free agents, no. I will dig in. I will dig in and I'll tell you Alan Lazard can't catch. I'll dig in and I'll tell you Quint, I like Quentin Jefferson better than Sheldon Rankins. Draft, I try to keep um more of an open mind. Um he can't can't separate. I think that's an exaggeration. I know he caught a lot of flat passes, but if I'm the Georgia's if you're Georgia's offensive coordinator, I'm doing that too. I'm just using Brock Bauer's cheat code yak ability. But I do think when you look at the reps where he is asked to run prototypical tight end routes, he demonstrates the ability to do that. Not a great catch radius. 2023 was a tough year for some contested catch ops, but over the course of his three year career, he does have a lot of plenty of downfield wins separation of tracking the ball in the air of making contested catches. He's got a lot of that on his film, not as much as the receivers just because the way he was used, but I think it's an exaggeration to say he can't do that. Tony says also a chance that an offensive lineman plays minimal games. Never would have guessed that Beckton lasts the whole season. Well, we would have guessed, we all would have guessed that the combination of Makai Beckton and a 38 year old Dwayne Brown would have lasted the whole season. And they didn't. And also, if Makai Beckton, if we had a rookie first round offensive lineman, like if we took Broderick Jones last year, he would have been in there over Makai Beckton when Makai Beckton became unplayable down the stretch when he was playing hurt on a bum ankle. So Mekhi Beckton didn't even really last the whole season. He was just out there playing on a bad ankle because he was better than Carter Warren and Max Mitchell, but he wouldn't be better than Broderick Jones injured. He would be better than Troy Font, no, if he, you know, if he was in last year's draft. So if we drafted a first-round tackle last year, that dude would have played pretty much the entire season. Would I give 10 and 72 to six and grab neighbors? Oh yeah. Wouldn't even, th wouldn't even have to hesitate. I think it would cost more. I, I, I think it would definitely cost more. I would do that. I would take an offensive lineman, maybe double up two fourth round offensive linemen. One of you, please be good. Call up David Bakhtiari to be a backup. And I would go score points and win games. Did you see Joe Blewett had alt as OT3? Uh, no, I did see that he had at Latham ahead of alt, but who else does he have? Does he have Olu ahead of alt? Where am I at right now? So I am at, I would say, what, one through like six or seven? I would say I'm at alt one. I am now at font, no, font, font, fontanu. Uh, number 55 for Washington. I don't know. <laughs> uh, I don't, I don't, I'm, listening, I'm not listening to the broadcast. I'm just watching the silent tape, as Robert Sala calls it. So I probably mispronounced a lot of these guys' names. Um, Fontenot, number two. I'm at Latham, three. I'm at Fashionu, four. I'm with Fuaga, five. And Mims six, and I haven't watched any other any. Actually, I shouldn't even rank Mims because I barely watched him, but I think he's got to be in the conversation because of his freakish tools. Um, haven't watched Guyton or or Morgan or any of those other guys, but at least that's my top five or six. Number of QBs in the first round, at least five. Four to six, 
four to six, so I, I guess I'll guess five. Another super chat from Adam. Thank you. Uh, Adam says, I don't know why. Oh, got it. Do, 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 do. Just saying, I want to see the Jets build on their current young talent on the O-line. Oh, yeah, man. That's why, that's why I have four players clear cut ahead of Bowers right now. But I think some people, and, and me, and it's not just a one-off. Like, it is very consistently like that's the one player where people like seem to freak out like don't even talk about it it's like dude you know outside of jet circles no other team is like vomiting projectile at the idea that bowers is on their team but he is a consensus top 10 player in this draft The Jets to try and draft CJ Shaw and see if that works. I do agree. They should draft a quarterback who's like an immediate top eight quarterback as a rookie. I don't know why they haven't tried that. Didn't the Marius Mims get hurt? Oh, I think you're right. Was it him? I think maybe you're correct about that, Dave. Oh, Fashion who got hurt. Okay. Thought it might have been Mims. 10 in our second round and extra to move up to six. That checks out by the point value chart. Um, I just think it would cut like if I'm the if you think about it, if you're the Jets. If you're the Jets and you had picked number six, would you move out for a second round or next year? I wouldn't. I would take neighbors. You got to at least give me a second rounder this year for me to move out. And we don't have that. Now, maybe the Giants are more rebuilding, so they think that they, they'd be more willing to defer uh, the return. But probably a minimum, you're talking like a fourth rounder this year and a second rounder next year. I would say minimum to come up to six. You might be competing with quarterback offers. A team might be willing to come up and get a quarterback, and they're going to pay more than a, than a next year's second to come up and get a quarterback. Max says, do you think they should target a power running back in the fourth? Yeah, or sign a power running back in Ezekiel Elliott if he's not completely washed. Maybe he is. I don't know. I didn't really watch a ton of him at the Patriots last year. Maybe he sucks now. But um, uh, if you could try to find one at, in the sixth round at 185, I would like that a little better than at um, 111 or 135. But it's a running back is objectively a depth need, right? You only have two running backs on the roster. Need more than that. But I'll leave it there. Appreciate you guys hanging out.
We'll talk all soon. Go Jets.